Hi, so every day we are creating around five exabytes of data. That is five billion GBs. And to put that number into perspective, the total amount of information that we have created since the beginning of civilization to 2004 is also five exabytes. Let that sink in for a moment. If you think about it, we are literally creating history every single day. And the numbers are staggering. Every minute, 72 hours worth of video content is uploaded to YouTube. Almost three and a half lakh photos are shared on WhatsApp. We swipe 4,16,667 times on Tinder. I mean, the number of matches from those swipes is a completely different story. Google alone receives 40 lakh search queries, and all of this has happened since the time I started talking. This is truly the information age. And the idea is, and this is phenomenal for one simple reason. If you look at the history of humanity, the, the populace has always consumed information or knowledge that has been produced by the select few. This has completely changed today due to the internet and web 3.0. What has started happening is that a lot of people have started creating content and they have started sharing it with the world. What We are completely okay with sharing our opinions, we are okay with sharing our perspectives and in fact having a discussion around it. And what this has led to, the access that we have to various perspectives or opinions or ideas, it has completely changed the way in which we learn, design, create and disrupt. Let me give you some examples. When I started learning HTML back when I was in school, I was working with two, I think they are two of the most beautiful programs that humanity has ever written, which is the Notepad and Internet Explorer. <laughs> and all I wanted to do was center align a menu on the web page, and I just couldn't do it. I spent hours and hours, you know, I used to go to Notepad, edit, a, edit some code, go back to Internet Explorer, and then I would see nothing has changed, and I wouldn't know why. So I would go back again and I would edit it and it was a very tedious process. And this has completely changed today. If you talk to any software developer, they will swear by Stack Overflow, which is basically a Cora-esque website where all other people from technology and software development answer your questions and help you solve problems about development in tech, basically. And this is not limited only to technology or science or IT. In fact, if you have heard of Reddit, it's a community which has sub-communities for almost every topic on this earth. The idea behind it is that you will have topics, you will have sub-communities on music, you will have sub-communities on art, you will have sub-communities on uh, trees, whatever, you name it and you have it. Reddit also has a lot of other subreddits which are Ask Science, Ask History, Explain Like I'm Five, where people give you detailed and well-researched answers for very complicated questions. This is a question from Explain Like I'm Five. And the question seems very simple, but it's not. The question is, why does light travel? And if you look at the answer, the answer has been so beautifully explained that a five-year-old will actually understand this concept of why light travels. And I really don't know who this cave Vandy 15 is. For all we know, she might be a theoretical physicist. For all we know, he might be a dancer. But the point is, that really doesn't matter. What matters is the way in which the answer has been put up and the way in which this complex set of uh, phenomena has been explained in less than two lines. Reddit also has another community called Ask Me Anything, where personalities such as Barack Obama, Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk, Edward Snowden come and take questions from the users and they answer it. This is a screenshot from an Ask Me Anything of Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is one of the world's leading astrophysicists. And this is interesting for two simple reasons. Look at the first question. The first question is some person asking Mr. Tyson the relation between relativity, photons and time. And it takes Mr. Tyson less than two lines to explain this entire concept to him. And the second reason why this is extremely interesting is that when somebody asks Mr. Tyson what is one subject that he would introduce in every university in the world, he didn't say science or art or space. His answer was as simple as how to spot bullshit. I mean, think about it. Could you imagine this happening with Newton or with Einstein ever? And again, this is not limited only to sharing information and sharing ideas. When I saw this picture on Humans of New York, it immediately hit me. You know, somebody who has grown up in a culture which is significantly different from mine, 
who has gone through experiences which are completely different from mine and who has lived life in a country that is miles away from my country has the same reaction when people come and look for empathy from you oh and that's the idea you know this is where i immediately connected with a person who i have never met in my life i don't even know his name for that matter but the idea is and this is this is what made me realize that you know we might come from different pasts we might have different experiences we might have different perspectives but in the in the end we all are were and will always be human and if we are talking about content why look beyond ted the first ted talk that i ever saw was do school skill creativity by sir ken robinson and if you haven't seen it you should he spoke about how the entire education system was built for a post industrial evolution era and how it is irrelevant in today's time i mean i was blown away when i saw that talk it completely changed my perception about education it come changed my perception about knowledge it changed my perception about career as a whole and these were just some examples to make you understand not only the amount of information that we are creating and consuming but also the variety of it and the quality of the information that is available and this is interesting because if you uh, and the one thing that stands out which is extremely interesting is that the one thing that the information age has completely disrupted is ironically disruption itself i mean today it really doesn't matter what do you know as long as you know what to do with it and if you look at you know let's step back and look at the way we have progressed to this you know humanity started by sharing knowledge via word of mouth from generation to generation we then went on to drawing on caves drawing on stone slabs from that we graduated to the printing press which was the trigger for the industrial revolution from that we have come to the computers we have come to internet and now we have come to mobile devices and if you look at it at every stage in this progression access to information has become exponentially easier and the point is when you have easy access to information your dependence on it reduces completely so today it really doesn't matter you know how much can you rote learn or how much can you sort of remember because i can just google it and then we both will be at the same point the idea is to change perspective and to look at things differently the idea is to look at systems and figure out that what is the logic behind the systems what are the what are the loopholes in the system why does the system work if you look at it it has single handedly disrupted a variety of industries and more often than not the people who have spearheaded the disruptions have had nothing to do with the industry that they have disrupted and this is exactly what is innovation in today's age this is what innovation is going to be for a long time now i mean let's look at think stream we took very basic concepts of human behavior we took very basic concepts of design and positive reinforcement and we mixed it with something as simple as wifi and we said okay we are going to create a bin which gives you access to wifi the moment you trash into it what we did was we gave people something that they really wanted which is wifi for something that they would really like to have which is a clean india and when you are talking about disruption i think it's always best to go without preconceived notions or to go with a blank mind basically we are currently working on developing india's first uh, development and design boot camp and this is one question that we that we get quite often you know why are you doing this i mean we are doing this because we are the ones who came from a commerce background had to learn everything by ourselves we we asked we googled we begged we sat behind developers who were coding just trying to make sense of whatever symbols were there on the screen and then we went home we researched and we learned all of this and we yeah, are in the process we broke a lot of routers we got a lot of wires and multiple other things but this is this is what disruption is and the starting point for disruption is to start converting information to knowledge if you look at information information is irrelevant without perspective it's completely moot it's useless it's only when you put a perspective or a perception or figure out the logic of the information is when it starts making sense if i may you can you could almost say that information is scalar whereas knowledge is vector and the world if you look at it it's it's completely changing in a way where it really doesn't matter anymore what you have done or you know where you have gained that knowledge from it really doesn't matter you could have learned it from wherever i mean it's like music or any form of art for that matter when is the last time you heard an artist that you really liked 
we keyed him and then you said that you know what this guy does not even have a bachelor's degree i'm not going to listen to his music you know when is the last time you walked out of a theater because the director didn't have relevant work experience i mean it doesn't work like that art is art art is very simple if you like it it is art there's no right there's no wrong it's if you if i like any work of uh, any work made by any person and i really like it it is art for me and slowly we are moving towards that in every other industry look at products for example do you really care what the creator of angry birds has studied have you gone and check if the founder of whatsapp actually has a degree in telecommunications it really doesn't matter if you like a product you are going to use it if you don't like it you aren't be it that's the point it's about what is useful to you it is about what makes sense to you where you get the idea behind it where do you get the entire concept behind it how do you make it is something that nobody cares about and when you are looking at and the point is to disrupt you know you could be disrupting anything that you want you could be disrupting shoe laces you could be disrupting the kitchen you could be disrupting corruption you could be disrupting speakers you could be disrupting consciousness if you want but the point is and the point in the information age specifically is to consume the abundant amount of information that you have around you to convert it to knowledge to figure out the logic behind that knowledge cut out all the noise from the information and the knowledge that you have created and you keep calm and you disrupt thank you